Are you a nurse looking to migrate into the UK anytime soon? This is especially for you if you are from the red list country. These are countries that employers in the UK are not actively recruiting nurses from. So in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how you can achieve your goal of moving to the UK with less than £2,500. So if this is something that you are interested in, Keep on watching to the end. What if I told you that nurses are still moving to the UK, actively moving to the UK, even though there have been like restrictions for nurses who are in red list countries. Quite a number of people are still moving into the country. So the method, the route I'm going to be talking about in today's video is called the self sponsorship route. Now this is not new. This is something that has been happening before, but quite a number of people are not aware of this route. If you know how doctors move to the UK, you know that they have to come into the country to write their PLAB exam first, pass the exam and start looking for job. Now this is something similar that nurses started doing because of the restrictions for people who are in red list countries. What most employers are doing right now is recruiting nurses who are not from those red list countries. So people like nurses from the Philippines, nurses from other countries outside of Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, those other countries who are not on the red list. So there is something that most employers are looking for from overseas nurses. And this is something that you can achieve if you follow what I'm going to be showing you you in today's video but you need some cash but don't worry today's video will be all about how you can save and how you can cut costs in achieving this goal because I have quite a number of tips to share for you all today if you follow this video till the end you will learn ways in which you can achieve this without breaking the bank so ensure that you watch every bit of the video. The self-sponsorship route will be very helpful for people who have written their CBT exam and written their IELTS exam and they have passed both of the exams. And those exams are about to expire. So for nurses who are intending to move to the UK, you've got two ways in which you can move. Either you come through the route that every other person did where you do your CBT exam in your home country, you get a job, and then your employer pays for your OSCE process, pays for your flight, pays for bringing you over to the UK, or you consider the self-sponsorship route, which we're going to be discussing today. So if you are at that stage where you have written your CBT, you have written your IELTS, and those exams are about to expire, I will advise you to consider the self-sponsorship route. And that's because, like I said before, today's video will help you cut down costs so that you don't spend a lot of money coming into the country through the self-sponsorship route to write your exam. So basically, what the self-sponsorship route is all about is you coming into the UK through a visitor's visa to come write an OSCE exam. It is legit. Even on the Government UK website, it tells you that you can come in through a visitor's visa to write your exam. For those of you who don't know, I did a video recently talking about how you can apply for your visitor's visa and documents that you need. So ensure that you watch that video to give you an idea. If you want me to do a specific video for those applying for OSCE, let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to do that. But I will leave the link to the visitor's visa video like I talked about so you can access that easily. So basically you have to sponsor yourself to the UK to write the OSCE exam and when you pass the OSCE exam you would get your pin and this is something you can do from the comfort of your home by making some phone calls and filling out some forms. The thing is once you are in the UK and you have your pin it's easier to get a job as a nurse and that's because there's no difference between yourself and myself who is already here in the country. So this is something that we would help you to achieve that your goal of being a UK registered nurse and working in the UK as a nurse. So I'm going to be listing now five easy steps for you to consider, five easy steps for you to start this journey of sponsoring yourself as a nurse into the UK. So because our aim in today's video is to cut down costs, not to spend a lot of money, quite a number of people would tell you, go ahead to book your OSCE, but that would not be my number one suggestion. My number one step would be for you to find a friend or if you've got a family member here in the UK, Discuss with them. Let them know that you want to come over to the country to write your exam. And that's because they can help 
take away some expenses off your shoulder so you don't have to pay for accommodation if you get someone who can sponsor you into the country then you don't have to bother looking for somewhere to stay so that would be my number one step to discuss with friends and family members that can accommodate you so because this person is accommodating you the person is going to be like your sponsor and for them being your sponsor they have some things that they need to give you some documents that they need to give you to help in your application process so they need to do an invitation letter and the invitation letter should indicate that they are accommodating you here in the country so they could either partially sponsor you or sponsor you fully and when i say partially it just means that they are only covering your accommodation they're not covering your feeding they're not covering your transportation to and fro while you are in the country the only thing they want to cover is your accommodation and because they're covering just that bit they would have to show like their tenancy agreement they'll have to show their passport their brp just that they are legal in the country okay but I don't think you would have any friend or family member that will not feed you while you are staying in the person's house. I don't think there is anybody like that. So I feel like you would have somebody who would accommodate you and feed you while you are in the person's house. But just in case you don't have somebody who you can stay with while you were here in the country then my next suggestion would be for you to get an airbnb i did not say a hotel and that's because it would be more expensive airbnbs are somewhere that you can stay and cook by yourself while you were there so you can get that and that would cut costs for you as well because you can be cooking your food for yourself you don't have to pay to get food every day I mean, some people eat three square meals. You don't have to pay. You don't have to spend all of that money. So ensure that you try and get somebody that you can stay with. And that's because we're trying to cut costs. So I'm not going to add the money that you will spend on accommodation. For some people who do not have someone to stay with, accommodation could cost probably around 600, 700 pounds, depending on where you are staying and depending on how long you are staying in the country for. But the first thing is to sort out your accommodation. And then my next step would be for you to book your OSCE exam. Now, the reason why I said to get somebody who you can stay with to help cut down the cost and accommodation is so that you don't have to bother about where you would stay but just in case you are sorting out your accommodation by yourself meaning you are paying for an airbnb ensure that when you are booking your airbnb you book it close to the center where you would be writing your exam just so that you don't have to start stressing to get transportation to the oski center and that way you don't have to spend more money so there are five centers here in the uk you've got off star you've got oxford you've got northampton and two other centers for you to write the exam i wrote my exam in off star everybody knows where the best center is i will tell you or i will recommend for you to write your exam or book your exam at the off star center if you know you know i'm not going to give specific reasons in today's video so this is the step where i would say book your oski exam and the fee you would pay to book your OSCE exam is £794. I'm not praying for anybody to fail. I'm praying for all of my watchers of today's video to pass their OSCE exam. But just in case there is any station for you to receipt, that amount is about £397. But God forbid, we don't pray for anybody to receive any station. So once you book your OSCE exam, NMC UK would provide you some learning materials, some training materials that you can use to start prepping for your OSCE. Some people can say, okay, fine, I want to get like a private tutor, somebody who can teach me everything I need to know about the OSCE exam. If you decide to get a private tutor, that's all of you, that's absolutely fine, depending on your method of learning. 
quite a number of people could charge you say about 500 to 700 pounds depending on who you get and where the person is located you could also watch youtube videos of different stations and practice with the videos that you're watching on youtube i've seen a youtuber i think her name is violet okolucha she does oski content so videos on this she does that regularly and it's something that you can start prepping with now this I don't know anything about her but I have seen quite a number of her videos where she's talking about the OSCE preparation process so you can have a look give it a go and if you find it helpful fantastic all the best with the OSCE ensure that you try and pass it on your first attempt if you don't you have a maximum of three attempts to pass the OSCE exam once you've booked your OSCE exam the next thing you have to do is to ensure that you check your finances so for people who do not get full sponsorship from their friends and family members and they are just getting all only the accommodation sorted or if you are sorting out your accommodation by yourself you need to show your proof of funds so that's where like your bank statement comes into play and that's where you have to show that you can fund your trip into the country so you need to ensure that when you are doing your bank statement it is able to cover the duration of time that you are staying here in the UK and that's because when you apply for your visa at the next step you're applying for the standard visitors visa you need to ensure that every information in your bank statement tallies with every information that you feel when you are applying for your standard visa so take for example if you say that you've got a job and your job is good enough your job is paying so and so and so it needs to tally in your bank statement as well you need to show that you've got enough money to fund yourself here in the country how would you feed yourself how would you transport yourself how would you get everything that you are saying that you would be able to do here in the uk how would you fund that you need to ensure that all of that is shown in your bank statements if you say that you are staying in the country for one week two weeks three weeks your bank statement should reflect that you have enough money to fund that so when you apply for your standard visitors visa the amount that you pay for the visa is 115 pounds that's the current amount that you would pay for a standard visitors visa so if you are going to be writing your exam let's say um three weeks time ensure that you start the application process way 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 before that you can apply for a visa about three months prior to when you need it give it ample time just in case there is a delay just in case your decision does not come out on time you have enough time and that's because you will not be in a haste because you have booked your OSCE exam so if your OSCE exam is scheduled for one date book your visa way ahead of that another reason is because it would give you enough time to prepare even while you were in the country so when you come into the country and you want to do one or two preparations and you know planning you can do all of that so when you are applying for your visa ensure that you give yourself ample time before the OSCE date of your exam i would also recommend that if you are getting sponsorship from your friends and family member every detail that they would feel in their invitation letter in every information that they give you it tallies with your own information you don't want to be saying one thing and your sponsor is saying another thing so if your sponsor is saying they want to sponsor you for two weeks they're accommodating you for three weeks for one month your details as well that you are filling you will tally with that so ensure that you have your details in check when you are applying for your visa so the next step is for you to book your flight now if this is your first time of traveling i would recommend that you book a direct flight and that will save you the whole stress and the whole trouble of connecting between one country and another but because we're trying to save costs well the suggestion i would give is to consider connecting flights it's not for everybody but it is something for you to consider connecting flights are cheaper as compared to using a direct flight and that's because you are going to lay over in one country before you end up in your final destination which is the uk if you are using a connecting flight 
ensure that you do not have a connecting flight that is going to be in a country that would require you to apply for a transit visa that's just another trouble on its own so ensure that you use an airline that do not require you to apply for a transit visa now i did a video on airlines that you can use without you applying for transit visa i'll leave the link in the description box for you to access it easily so once you have done all of this you have applied for your standard visitors visa you've arrived in uk you have written your oski exam and you have passed please ensure that you pay the 153 pounds for your registration so that you can get your uk pin i would advise you to pay that on time as well so that there is no delay for you to get your pin once you get your pin this is where i would suggest that you start applying for jobs back to back not just applying for jobs because you are applying for applying sake you need to ensure that you push out good applications so when you have your uk pin and you are putting out your applications there is no difference between yourself and myself the major thing might just be that you do not have a uk experience but you already have your pin i have my pin and if i decide to say i want to change my jobs and i apply for a job the employer would still have to give me a certificate of sponsorship so it's the same with you you have your pin as well you need to sell yourself when you are putting out those applications and when you get invited for interview ensure that you ace the interview and you will get a certificate of sponsorship the thing is you cannot change your visit visa to a work visa while you are still in the uk so by the time you keep on applying for jobs and you get one you would have to go back to your home country to change your visa to a work visa so when you get back to your country you would apply for your visa from there and then move into the country fully that's just the thing so in today's video i've talked about how you can achieve your dream of moving into the country as a nurse how you can achieve your dream of practicing here in the uk even though it has been difficult for quite a number of people because of the whole restrictions with red list countries the self-sponsorship route is something you can consider if you don't have the money you can ask friends and family members to give you it's something that you would recover when you get back into the country and you can pay them off please ensure that you pay them back their money don't keep the money to yourself pay them back their money please and this is something that would help you in forging your career as a nurse so please do give this a go if you want me to do a specific video on the documents you would need to apply for the visa as a nurse through the self-sponsorship route please do leave it in the comment section i'll be more than happy to do that for you but if you just want to apply for a standard visitor's visa say you're coming across my video for the first time i've done a video on applying for a standard visitor's visa i'll leave the link in the description box but for those just seeing my face for the first time my name is mercy you are absolutely welcome to the channel thank you for coming thank you for stopping by thank you for watching the video for people returning to watch the video on the channel thank you so much for coming back this channel is all about migration nursing lifestyle content of those countries that you are migrating to and i do vlogs as well so if this is something that you fancy and something that tickles your vibe please do subscribe to the channel like the content as well share the contents to friends and family member it might not be helpful for you you might know someone who would benefit from it please do share it across to them and god bless you for all of your support have a good day bye